Lesson five is something I call Rick's Tips. Now, I was going to call it Richard's Tips because I, I do go by Richard professionally, even though my friends and family call me Rick. You can call me Rick if you want. Um, but Rick's Tips sounded better than Richard's Tips. So we're going to go with Rick's Tips. Okay. We're going to talk about ergonomics, computer caveats, things you got to watch out for, and tips for noobs. Yes, new computer users are called noobs. It's a term of endearment. We don't mean any insult by it. And that's what we're going to talk about in lesson five. All right. Ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency in their working environment. It involves designing or arranging workspaces, products, and systems so they fit the people who use them. Yes, this is kind of a dictionary definition, but if you don't know what ergonomics are, it's helpful. Ergonomics aims to improve workspaces and environments to minimize risk of injury or harm and enhance productivity by focusing on factors like comfort, ease of use, and the physical and psychological impact of design choices. That's a pretty cool definition, huh? This can include aspects such as chair height, keyboard positioning, workspace layout, and even the design of tools and machinery. Here are some of my tips from my extensive experience using computers. First, position your monitor so the top of it is at or near your eye level. You don't want to strain your neck by constantly looking up at your screen, but also you should avoid staring down excessively too. Keep your monitor about an arm's length away. It shouldn't be too close to your face or too far. And of course, adjust as needed based on your vision. And of course, posture is important. I try to keep my, my monitor, the top of my monitor, right at the top of my eye level. I've got two monitors on my desk. I got a big monitor across the top and I've got my laptop, which sits below that. And I, I have found that if I start to slouch in my chair at all, then I have to look up at the screen. So that, that's my way of catching my posture. So it forces me to keep my posture up, keep your back up straight, right? That way you don't have to worry about slouching or or looking up and down. And it's kind of like when you go to the theater and you sit in the front row, right? And you got to look way up at the screen. Okay. Speaking of vision, something very important to me, be sure to take eye breaks, right? Do little eye exercises, stop working, look out the window, look at something across the street, a car, a house, whatever, and then look at something close like your hand, right? Do that back and forth like 10, 15 times. I try to do this at least once an hour. It prevents your eyes from getting locked in like a fixed position for too long, right? It's good for your overall eye health and to prevent vision-related headaches. I used to get them all the time. And of course, it goes without saying, I shouldn't even have to put it in this video. Make sure you got proper eyeglasses if you need a prescription eyewear. I've mentioned this before, get wrist rests for both your mouse and your keyboard. You'll thank me later. I also recommend getting a foot rest for beneath your desk. Now, occasionally I like to have my feet flat on the floor, but after a while, I like to sit back and elevate my feet, especially when I'm doing something that's not super important. Now, I've tried various commercial foot rests, but honestly, what I find works the best is my lock box. I got one of those little fireproof safe boxes, right? There's nothing in it, but it's the perfect height to sit under my desk for me to put my feet up on. So whatever works for you, it's like four or five inches tall and it works great. All right. So figure out something that works for you. There's a lot of these different commercial footrests on like Amazon and stuff. You can try those. I've tried a couple of them. I wasn't happy with any of them. And I went back to my, my little lock box. <laughs> now, here's a suggestion I have for those with the necessary budget. I truly love my standing desk. It's a desk that you can adjust. It's got a little electric motor. So it's either at sitting height or you can lift it up to be at standing height. You push a single button, it goes up. You can stand when you're working. You push another button, it goes back down to your seated height. Now, they're not super expensive. I paid like $500 for mine. But when I have a long day in the chair, you know, and I've got stuff I've got to get done, I push the button, I stand up. I've got one of those uh, kitchen uh, floor mats that have like the gel in it so I can stand on that with my socks. It's so comfortable. Right. I don't use it super often, maybe once a week or so, but it's fantastic for those moments when I, I got to work and it's a real back saver if I don't want to sit in my chair all the time. So check it out. All right. Next up, computer caveats, things you need to watch out for. Be careful of. First off, keep beverages away from your computer. I've ruined numerous keyboards and even complete laptops in the past because of spilt drinks. 
In fact, my lab puppy wrecked a $1,000 laptop when he got excited and knocked over my coffee that was sitting next to the laptop. Now, if it's just water that you spill, yeah, usually if you unplug it right away, turn it off, you can save it. But no, not with coffee. It's because I have cream and sugar in mine. It's all sticky. It gets inside the keys. It was it was gone. I no, I wasn't gonna about to take the whole thing apart and try to clean it. Um, so now what I do is I have a little drink holder that sits below the surface of my desk. So it's almost impossible for me to spill a drink on my desk now. And even if my puppy does come in, he can he can't knock that. If he knocks it over, it's just gonna fall on the on the ground. So be careful. I mentioned this one earlier in the hardware lessons, but magnets and computers are not friends. Now, chances are if you got a brand new computer, you don't even have any magnetic parts in it, but just in the case you've got an old school hard drive, don't put any magnets near your computer. I'm talking about magnetic tipped screwdrivers. I'm talking about magnetic decals. I had one customer that had her, her like a magnetic, like a, a little calendar that she got from a company and it was stuck to the side of her computer and she kept having problems and couldn't figure out why it was right up against where the hard drive was and it was just strong enough to cause problems got rid of that thing problems went away laser printers and power all right large laser printers and copiers draw significant amounts of power when they first start up or when a print job is sent to them they go into sleep mode you send down a print job it kicks on so don't plug your laser printer into the same power strip or even wall outlet that your computer's on because the printer can drain power, taking it from your computer, causing your computer to reboot or lose power momentarily or all kinds of strange problems can happen. So if you have a large laser printer, place it across the room from your computer or at least run an extension cord to a different outlet. And of course, I strongly recommend you plug your computer into a quality surge suppressor or UPS. Next up, keep your PC off the floor. I've seen so many offices, especially where they've got their computer on the floor. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Keeping it off the floor keeps it safe from spills, kicks from your feet, passers-by, other things like that. Additionally, raising the computer off the floor can help prevent dust and debris from getting sucked into the system, which can clog fans and other components, leading to overheating and potential damage. If possible, place your PC on a dedicated stand or a stable surface to maintain good airflow and accessibility. Yes, there are desk mounted brackets like this guy or little roller stands you can get that can keep your PC elevated off the floor, even just a couple inches. And these accessories not only protect the computer from potential damage, but also provide ease of access and can help in maintaining proper ventilation. Very important for a computer, airflow. Speaking of dust, I've seen stuff worse than this, okay? Dust is a silent killer for your computer, and I recommend that if you have a traditional desktop or tower case, that you have it professionally cleaned out at least once every couple of years. Or if you know how to open up the computer yourself, get yourself a can of compressed air, take it outside or to the garage, blow the dust out of it. If this is not something you feel comfortable doing, a lot of PC repair shops will do it for you for a relatively small fee. And trust me, it's better to pay the small fee to have the dust blown out of the fans in your computer and the power supply than it is to have them stop working and your CPU dies, and then you're looking for a new computer. And of course, make sure the computer is off and unplugged before you try opening the case. And I don't recommend you do this unless you are fairly knowledgeable and experienced with working on things like this. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying if you are the kind of person that goes inside your computer, then blow the dust off the fans once in a while and remember don't open the power supply and don't do that funny thing where you turn the can of air upside down and it blows frost out of it no that's that don't do that that's bad <laughs> yeah back in the 90s when i had my computer repair shop we used to chase each other around the office like pretending we were frost breathing dragons <laughs> no, don't do that it's not safe Here's another one from the the tales of my computer repair days don't use power strip buttons to turn your computers on and off. I had a customer once who did this because he had a computer, the monitor, the speakers, the printer, everything plugged into one power strip. So when he left for the day, he would just hit that power button and turn everything off and come back in the next day and hit the power switch and turn everything back on. Now, this is going back to the days when, you know, even direct power like that from a power strip would still turn a computer on. Nowadays, most computer switches don't. 
you have to still physically hit the switch on the computer to turn the computer on, but you could turn it off by killing the power from the power switch from the from the power strip. Not a good idea. Don't do that. First of all, you can leave a computer running 24-7. They don't use that much power. But if you're going to turn the computer off, Windows likes to be shut down using the Windows shutdown commands on the start menu. Yes, we'll talk about that in our Windows class. It's also not a good idea to have all of your equipment like that on the same power strip as I mentioned earlier, especially if you got a printer on that power strip, okay? So turn off and on all the components individually. Also, beware of static electricity. Now, I've known more than a couple of computers who have shocked their computers to death, literally. And if you work in one of those places that's filled with static electricity, or if you have your computer in a house with lots of rugs. I remember my days, I used to live up in Buffalo, New York for most of my life. And in the winter especially, you get that dry heat going on middle of January. You know, you get up, you walk to the bathroom, you come back, you, you know, you've walked across two carpets by now. You know, you, you touch a door handle and zzz, zap, right? Now that kind of a static charge can actually kill a computer. I've seen it happen before, okay? So try to discharge the static from your body before you touch your keyboard or mouse. Touch the bottom of your desk if there's metal there. Touch, like I said, touch a doorknob if you can. Discharge. Better to zap your finger than to zap your computer. Those things are really sensitive. Now, if you do work in, a, in an environment where you've got lots and lots of static and there's nothing you can do about it, they do make these strips that you can put. You can attach the strip to your keyboard and then it clips to something metal like under your desk. And you can touch that before you touch your keyboard to, to discharge the static. They, they use these in PC repair shops a lot. All right, I talked about this earlier. Buy a UPS. They're not, you can get them one for under 100 bucks now. They're not expensive. And if the power goes off for even a few seconds, you, you, you might lose a lot of work and you could damage your computer. Even if you're working with a laptop, like I work with a laptop all the time. I still, even though the laptop has a battery in it, right? If the power goes out, the laptop still stays on. But the UPS still gives me even more time to be able to shut everything down and, and it, it protects me from spikes and surges and make sure that my laptop is safe. All right, tips for noobs. This is for beginners. Noob is a term of endearment. I love noobs, okay? First of all, mistakes won't kill you. Well, probably. <laughs> a lot of people are afraid to use their computer because they're afraid they're gonna break something. Don't worry, generally, the computer is going to warn you before you can do something that's going to break it. All right. Usually it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? If it says, are you sure? And you're not sure, say no or hit cancel. All right. There's a feature called undo in a lot of applications, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. They've all got an undo feature. If you click on something, if you, if you delete something and you're not sure, just undo it. And again, I'll talk more about undo in my Windows classes. Be persistent. The only way to really learn how to use the computer is to use the computer, right? Try and try again. I can show you how to do these things. I can tell you about stuff. But if you're not persistent, if you don't practice, you're not going to go very far, right? It's like becoming a baseball pitcher. You just got to do a lot of pitching, right? You just got to use your computer. You'll get better at it. I've had people from all ages take my classes from six years old to 80 years old. So everybody can learn this stuff. Make sure that you apply what you learn. Again, you'll only learn so much from watching my hour-long video, okay? You got to practice and apply what you learn. Do these things, practice, practice, practice. This class was mostly informational, but my other classes, like when I'm teaching Word and Excel and that kind of stuff, you got to just do it. You got to practice it. Don't be afraid to explore. Click on things. Be curious. If you want to know what a button does, go ahead and click on it. Chances are you're not going to break something. Chances are. <laughs> Before you can do something catastrophic, the computer usually will ask, are you sure? And if you're not sure, well, say no. But more importantly also is to don't try to learn too fast. Right? I get people that want to buy like, you know, my entire expert series of classes and go through it in a weekend. No, take your time. I usually recommend don't spend any more than a couple hours a day trying to learn a new topic, any topic. After that, take a break, take a break, right? Rest, rest your brain, sleep on it, come back the next day. Walk away if you get frustrated. Banging your head against the keyboard isn't going to help, right? Get a cup of coffee, take a walk, do your eye exercises, 
and then come back when you're refreshed. And in fact, one of the things I teach a lot when I'm teaching Excel or Microsoft Access, which is database stuff, is apply what you're learning to non-work topics, okay? Um, if all you're doing is applying your new computer skills for work, you're not going to find it very much fun unless you love your job. Um, when I started learning computers, I used to collect baseball cards. So one of the first things that I did was I built a database to store and track my baseball cards. So I applied my computer knowledge that I was learning to something fun. That was a hobby. that was enjoyable. All right. If it's fun, you're going to want to do it over and over again. So try to apply what you're learning with the computer to having some fun, play some games, do something enjoyable. Now, when it comes to what to learn next, you've just finished intro to PCs, so congratulations. Next, I would recommend my Windows beginner classes. I usually have multiple levels of each type of class, so I've got Windows, Word, Excel, whatever. I would go to Windows next and at least take the first one of those. Then, if you're planning on learning Word and Excel, which are the two most popular programs that I teach, Microsoft Word, I would learn first, and then after that, go into Excel. And then after that, go into whatever other topics you want to learn, like Microsoft PowerPoint or Publisher or Access, if you want to learn how to build databases, all that kind of stuff. But that is the order in which I would learn stuff next.